Okay, so it got in there now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab it. And you're gonna go ahead and, since you have, you know, what do you call it, physical, um, helping you uh, if you didn't have this mounted. So you're just gonna squeeze, squeeze these guys down until you see this guy protruding in there, right? Okay, you wanna get your socket ready. So where was my socket to get it ready, right? <laughs> Okay, come on. Are you underneath? Okay, here he is. All right, so we're gonna get ready. Do you want to drive those that blue Loctite in there quickly, for it, you know, chance chance to drip all over the place? Okay, so here's go, one driven in. Okay, let's go and get the other guy real quick. I'm putting my greasy hands to touch this now. If you notice there, when I do push it in, I want to feel it that it's actually coming out from the other end. There you go. If you squeeze it down good enough, it should it should go all the way down in there for you. Once you make it pass, you should be good. There you go. Just got to get that in there. Got to say it's still spinning freely, so that means not in there yet. And I'm actually not doing loose righty tidy. That's my other problem. Okay. So it should go in there now. See that? You just want the blue Loctite thread in the thread area, and you want the grease to help this glide, and that's it. Then you want to inspect it to make sure. This guy goes forward. Don't worry about this guy. He's gonna slide back and forth regardless, uh, but he's supposed to be there. See, there you go. And give it a good hand tighten. Don't overdo this, just like the Bonjo bolt, uh, bleeder bolt there. And you're all set. And you can mount this back onto your brake assembly. And that's how you would normally um, just take out your brake pads to change them, pretty much. And you can clean it, get get brake, you know, brake cleaner, clean everything out thoroughly. Make sure you smash this all the way in with a C-clamp like I did. Makes your job so much easier. All right, don't worry, this tightness only through this side right here. So the thread should be exposing itself a little bit more. Nope, that's it, see how it's flush? So it doesn't go in much more than that. Careful, it's soft aluminum still. So I feel like this thing I can dig in a little bit more if I wanted to, but I don't want. Even though the thread doesn't come all the way out, but that's the length of it. So we got that there now, this is good. Now next step is to Disconnect this guy right here, this Bonjo bolt. Put them over here. And you're gonna need, I believe is a M12 socket to take this guy out. So my camera's about to die, so I might not be able to share with it with you. But I'm sure from here on, once it, here goes our M12. I'll put that guy in there. Might be even an M11, maybe even smaller. I feel like there's still some wig room. So just gonna remove this one. I'm gonna rip out the. I'm gonna not use this washer, but I'm gonna use the new washer that came with it right here. I'm actually gonna use the whole new Bonjo bolt here, and we're just gonna jump it over here, over here, and that's it. We're done. So let me see if I can get that paused and do it right now. Okay, it's only letting me have 56 more seconds, so I'm just gonna go and use the 12 one, keep it running for you guys. Oh yeah, this is hard. Yeah, this is stuck on there. I'm not probably able to do it before the six seconds up, so I'm gonna have to get a little bit more leverage here. Get a little handle or something to go over that guy. That he is not letting me go easily without a fight. So what you can do is just try to grab it like this with a different angle. And then try to bend it. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit struggle. So I'm gonna leave it that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera and I'll try to break this over somehow, move it over there. That's it, Mike. Okay, I finally got loose. It was a struggle, but yeah, there we go. Oh, there goes the brake fluid. That's fine, that's what we got this pan for. There we go. We're gonna rob him of all his dignity, no. <laughs> we're gonna, actually, the only thing we need is take this guy out of here. We're not even use this old one. Yeah, you might wanna wear some gloves. My wounds are like, okay, so, brake fluid's coming out. Gonna get this guy a good clean job here. Oh, brake fluid goes quick, don't they? Travels really quickly. I got some here on our, um, Never ending lock tight and it's coming out. All right. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get that. Uh, okay. It's only going to come out so much right now because it still has a back lock and the uh, master cylinder cap. So, we're good there. 
So let's go ahead and get this guy ready to put in here. Oh man, just want to keep it dry in areas that needs to be dry, you know? You can see here. There it goes, keep one washer in there. Actually, you know, you bring it out both here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it in a position where it's going to come, put our bungee bolt through here. Then we're going to put this rubber one, like it's meeting it, like right there. And what's going to happen, I think it's like that, yep. So you want to go ahead and position it face a certain way. See, that wasn't hard. Finally got it on there now. It does take an M12 socket to drive it. Careful not to cross thread it. And you want to line it where you're going to be facing your brake caliper. So I probably want to go straight like this. Or even maybe like this actually, sorry. Because you don't want to block your brake bleeder. Just kind of give that bolt down. You can pre-loosen it just to make sure first before you decide which area. I believe it's going to be this way. Because if it goes any other way, it might be a little bit difficult. So you can just position it to make sure you don't block your brake bleeder and how you want to position onto your your scooter once it's mounted. Then we're going to, we'll, we'll probably need to take off when it's going to mount like right there, I guess. You can feed it through here, your brake thing. I mean, your brake, your disc brakes. And then you can see where it's supposed to be mounted. I think it's supposed to be behind this. So you can see how it comes up like this, right? So that means we got to turn this guy over. Oh, sorry. Wish I had shown you. See how it comes up like this? So that means we got to turn this guy over like this. Like right there. This is where we're going to mount the two holes right there. It's going to come from underneath. So you guys can see it. So that two holes right there. Squeeze your brake lever in between your disc brakes. Come from underneath the two holes. Get this towel out of the way. And then you're going to make sure incline this in a way where it comes up and helps you. You might want to actually get this ready prop, prop in. Lock into your swing bolts and everything like that here. So I'm going to try get that all nice and tight and wrap it up. So there we go. Get this guy through. How he's really going to be. Kind of unloosen this. Get repositioned again. If you're, install if you're installing brand new uh, brake assembly, go ahead and just put that first on there. That way you can position the holes afterward and get some blue Loctite. There's going to be two M, uh, M, M uh, socket ones, but I believe they're like maybe M10 thread size. So I'm going to put some blue Loctite on here. And then we're going to go ahead and feed that in there. There we go. A little harder to get to because my muffler is a little bit in the way, but that's okay. Got one in there just to hold it in place, but it hasn't had blue Loctite yet. So what you can do is just feed it through here first. line or else it's cross threading it okay then you can take your socket if you have extension like what you heard if you don't have it do with what you have so I can find the extension here another can when I need oh sorry and then you want to make sure you squeeze your put it between your brakes pads there the the brake disc okay so here we go I'm just gonna do it by hand just driving in with M12 socket. Just want to make sure I can still drive and not cross. Yeah, it's loose because it's not going in the thread. It's only like a little bit of thread, like maybe a not even a full inch thread size. So I have to line this guy back, pull him out. Got a thread locker still there. Hold this one back a little bit. That's why I feel like it's got a little bit of grip on it. There you go. Then just spin as much as you can. Maybe you can go all the way in. Nice. Okay, so that's one spinned all the way in. See there. So you definitely want to just take off the, the bonjo bolt, you know, but you're about to put it on brand new anyway. I kept this, the new bolts here with the washers and everything. So you just got get the, the caliper assembly, the whole thing pretty much mount it first onto your scooter with your disc brake and then you can position the bonjo bolt accordingly to where you see it fit. Oh, got to unscrew this guy out to apply some blue Loctite. Again, I blue Loctite everything. 
and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do after that. And then put the bonjo bolts on them and then position the wires and everything like accordingly. There we go. Get some of that thread in there. Good, good enough. Let's go and get that guy back in there. Vibration happens everywhere. There we go. Okay, hand tight as much as I can. Chase them back with a socket. Help a little bit more spin freely. Okay, still kind of loose. I got the other side. Should be perfectly aligned. See there? It's going good. You shouldn't have enough thread in there that it'll come out a little bit. So that's it, just tighten it down. M12 like that will probably do a good. You can see here we got it bolted down just a little bit down here. Uh, I angle it this way because that's probably the only better way because if I angle here it'll block my brake bleeder and if I angle it to the side more this thing sticks out which I rather have not. So you can see how it goes right around smoothly here. It wraps up around, come up and we got enough slack here to be able to um, tie it down here. Again we're going to probably start cleaning up now. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get that all ready, cleaned out. We're probably going to give it a little scrub down uh, with some sandpaper, but let's just wipe it now. Just get that little spill out because I think with sandpaper, even though we, we sand it down, all the debris gets stick into the gel. And that's not, it's probably harder to work with. You can see how much lighter that took out. Even some of the areas that we had rust, you can see how it turns into a more silver color. So that formula does work pretty nicely. So we're just going to go and wipe it down, prepare for our sanding. If we need to we're not gonna sand this you know it's nicely engraved already uh, but we're gonna go ahead and wipe that gel off we don't need it to be sitting there um, so it's good now as it is just look out a little bit more here we can wipe it off so that's pretty much it that's the best we can do on that one and then what we can do is just get some sandpaper before we um and then we're gonna wipe it down after we sand just a little bit areas to give it some more teeth to bite into the paint the paint can be wiped down i also got some new adhesive for here so we'll get that guy taken care of too got some m3 adhesive actually got, came with the um the valves i had so there we go we're gonna go ahead and get that guy out all right Get all that gunk, I think I think we got the majority of it now off. Even the little crits area here, I put on there. It's a temporarily put on there. If you miss them, it's fine. We'll come back and check each one to make sure. Remember this area here, Rusty? Try thicken out your rag because you don't want that to cut through your skin. So I'll we'll make sure we get every other little angle by there. Okay, I think we got this side taken care of now. It's time to move on and get the other side. Let's go and get, you don't wanna leave that gunk on there too long. It doesn't really serve a purpose. There we go. See all that right there. This one memory was really, so we're gonna wipe that all clean, then get some sandpaper to it and we are good. You don't want to let this keep sitting in here with your paint stuff. Put some in here as well. Got a little crit area. All right, there we go. It's coming along. So enough, we got our brake done now. I cleaned this up. We'll leave it in there just to let it drain out some more. Uh, you know, all that brake pro is the old one here. We got our new one in there now with our NCY. So that wasn't that hard to change. Just routing the cables nicely where we wanted to. And now we're cleaning up all that little gel area before we actually hit it with some enamel. We're gonna sand it down, give it a little bit more teeth for the enamel to sink into. 
instead of just spraying over. You could spray it over, but I feel like doing a little bit better job. Get to all that area there. Just that we touched it with that gel, we could wipe it clean. I think that's about it. The rest is just wiping everything else down. Can't remember seeing all the areas, but we did quite a bit here. You can see now turns the rust to a little bit more better. Don't worry that rust remover is not getting all of it out. Sandpaper will do it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and save that for maybe a drier weather day. That way we can sand it down and give it a good, uh, spray the coat. But for right now, let's go ahead and configure out our oil cooler. But before we even get to the oil cooler, we gotta actually install our fan shroud back. We might be able just to take the studs off here. Hopefully the intake studs come off with it. But if it doesn't, then we definitely have to reassemble everything all over again. So it's no big deal. Um, I still left the fuel lines on there. It's been connected for the last hour. So let me go and feel this real quick. If it drains, it usually like drips right here in the Allen bolt. So far, my hand is dry. It seems like that little tie strap is doing a miracle work, uh, holding down pretty much the fuel from leaking. And then uh, we got our brake caliper installed already. Uh, everything's kind of tied down nicely. It's kind of looped down like this, like a little drain loop. So if it rains, I guess it gets caught up and just drips all away. It's a little bit away from the, the actual rim itself. You can see there. So it's not going to actually bother the rim. Still has some height off from the rim. And it loops right here. We still have a little bit of slack, which is fine. Because we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and tie strap this down neatly where we want it. Also, we got this right here to replace. So let's get that taken care of as well. Get this cheap, uh, you know, foam one off of it. And then we're going to install it with some nicer, uh, I believe they're almost M3-like, I guess. But um, nothing beats M3 uh, Velcro on for the helmet. But this actually came with the helmet. They gave me quite a few of them. I got this one for the um, GoPro um, helmet mount. And I guess it's the aluminum kind. It was a little bit more pricier than all the rest. But I figured you always get quality what you pay for. So here it is. Oh, look at that. All my little uh, tie straps were here as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and get that plower out. We're gonna pluck it out. And we're gonna put the new uh, M3 ones on there. So also I want to show you this charger here. It lights up. Well, I'll supposedly light up if it's plugged in. There we go. And then you have the magnet tip and you just leave your tip on there. I'm going to install one for the phone. That way I don't have to reach over for the hard wire and try to shove it in there forcefully. With the magnet, this part of it actually goes inside the phone already. So I'll have, I think all my devices are going to have that magnet attachment in the bottom. All I do is just reach over and just Pretty much you can do it one hand lightly and it'll, it'll just lock into place. So we're going to take this guy out. We don't need him anymore. So yeah, we're going to remove them away. We're just going to break this tie strap here. Get him out of the way from our ram mount. This ram mount lasted me a couple years already. It's still pretty good. You know, unfortunately some of the ram mount, they get crack and griddle a little bit. But it's not too bad. Still, still holds this power. So we'll leave that on there like that. Alright, let's get started. And remove this... Uh, Fake foam here. So let's do this real quick. Also got a new tripod clamp. I should have just brought it out to try it out with this one too. So this one, let's see if we can at least hold this ground here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get that foam removed. That way we'll, then we're gonna place it with some of these. These were like, a, I don't know why they only, they only, you only got one uh, base to mount your helmet and you have to give you like four or five of these ones right here these little sticky pads it, They're like m3. I guess maybe they are m3 who knows Let's see here if it's m3 it probably would say it, but I don't think so It just has like the ready so the red ones we're gonna go to our metal surface and this one's gonna go into our device I think we could probably get away with maybe to see the surface cover space Probably one is fine. I think one will do just as good. We just get smack in the center. So let me see if I can get this guy plowed out here. Look at that. Some of his residue is still left behind. This is worthless. Great. Now I gotta do some cleanup now. All right. So, oh, look at that. Just purposely. Just a bunch of marshmallow, really. Just so weak. 
Let me see. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> More work, huh? Uh, I, this is probably a good time to get that scrub, scrub that little uh, plastic one. We don't need metal on this one. Just get that little plastic one and see if we can scrape it off. So let me do that real quick. So I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. Scraper tool here. So I got the razor blade in there. Let's see if I can do it with the razor blade. Nah. Okay, change it to the plastic one. Let's see if it's easy enough to change it. I'm not sure. Get that out of the way. Wish I didn't even put it on there in the first place, huh? Save all that work. But lesson learned. So I gotta change this guy out. And put the plastic one in the replacement. Gotta be careful with this. If you're holding with your naked finger, real careful. There we go. Slide out like that. Put your plastic one in replacement. Bend one edge, bend one edge, and snaps into place. There we go. Let's go after it. Oh man. Just create work for us, don't you? I wish I can get an angle where it's all clean and clear. But this is it. Not too bad. Oh man. Okay, we get our trusty scrubber here. It's always been reliable for us. If all else fails. This thing's been through cylinders, cylinder heads. It's <laughs> still doing a good job. Thank you. Oh, unbelievable. Why do we have to do this again? Oh man. Got to be careful with these wires too. Oh, get an angle there. Hope that you guys can see it. That's one good thing about being able to view on the note. You can actually see what you're recording and the clarity of it. You can tap the screen for the resolution adjustment. Those action cameras, you know, they're, they're made to be compact and they serve a purpose of being able to shock resistance. But man, they don't do a great job as far as doing some kind of vlog. Editing is just horrible. I think there's some adhesive remover out there, but I don't have any on me. So we'll do our best we can with just scrubbing it but what we got. I don't want to put it on top, you know? Oh, that's just nasty stuff. Look at that. You know, if it sticked, it would have been okay, but it didn't stick, so now we have to scrub it off to, to reapply. Just create more work for us, you know? It's coming off though. Shouldn't put it on in the first place, but I knew it was gonna be this much trouble. Okay, after this. there There we go. It's coming smoothly. Just gotta get a little bit more of this guy out here. Look at all that gunk. So let's get our scraper again. Let's go after it. 
plastic on plastic, not a bad trade off. Oh, it just cracked there. <laughs> yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Let's see if our alarm still works. I'll push the button just to make sure. The battery's still connected, so. Yep, still works. Uh, let's see if actually scissor. I'm gonna go and arm it. Okay, here's the sensor. All right, so the sensor's still working. All right. That little horn is pretty loud and it's not even uh, attached to our our regular horn. So I'm pretty impressed by that. And I gotta clean the scrubber out too as well. I mean I clean the, the the fading thing. Darn it you. You make me do more work than I intended. Now it's really smooth. Very smooth. I want to get even more smoother. There we go. I only can see is the adhesive shadow, which is a good thing. There we go. There we go. A little bit more better angle here. You guys can see it also. I'm trying to get that all wiped out. I think it's almost most there. Support the back a little bit. All right. Scott Sprague. Okay, it's almost gone there. All we see is really. Almost completely gone. That's one side. Now we gotta go back to the post here. Let's see how the post was. Sun's breaking out from the rain. It's kind of nice. It's about four in the afternoon now. All right. Ugh. Look at this. So I got ways to go in this guy. It sure looks bad. Okay, left behind. You guys see that? That hidden, hidden jewel here. <laughs> Look at that. That's why cheap stuff. Probably not even put it on the first place. It don't stick where you need it the most. And now we're plussing around, shoving things up and down here. It's gonna, look at that. I think there is probably a adhesive remover. You can probably take it off with it. I think I can grab a few just with my nails here. This is horrible. Yep. Scrubbing tool is not getting any grip in the areas we need it to. That's the thing. Maybe I can do that. If I can break it enough, I could probably scrub it. Oh, sorry, you can't even see where I'm scrubbing the heck out of it. Use the 
corner of it, really. we do somewhat okay all right how did this get all the way over here or is it part of the oh this is actually a little bit of the chisel all right that's interesting I wonder if sandpaper will probably take help me take it out some more golly that thing just leaves a really nasty gunk serves no purpose at all hate the idea of having it on there like that must be a way to get it off quicklier I guess just keep scrubbing until it comes off peeling it off little by little with my fingernail scratching it really Wish it was peeling more. That's what I got this plastic thing for. Go ahead and wipe it out a little bit. Scotch Bright's been doing everything for us. It's like our finger here. One guy here. Let it curve around in the areas we need him to. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep on trying to scrub it here. You have to watch me from the side. I like this, uh, one thing about this tripod, I cannot find it, it actually has a clamp like this. You can just clamp it back in position. You don't have to screw it or anything like that, you know, especially when you're already recording. So that's the advantage it has, even though it's leg and stuff, it's not like the best compared to those rubberized ones, you know? But it still does a trick, you know what I mean? Some things are simple and they got a little niche on their own like that. Ooh. Oh man, it's coming, but I'm sure it's paying a price. Cleaner will actually get the heat stuff off, huh? That'd be interesting. Nope. Double up the power here. Let's give you a good finger workout. Some of this stuff here, that it makes you do. <laughs> There we go. Have a little bit more control using this guy here. You can shove him a little bit more further up. Wow. All right, so let's see if I can spray some WD-40. It'll probably help it remove that some adhesive. That thing is strong. Or even brake cleaner, really. So let's try to put some WD 40. I'll spray it on here, my cloth. 
I get some WD forty in this guy too. It's coming. Surely. Good. Oh. Ooh, ninja it. A little bit better now, as you can see here. The result of our fruits. This one as much as we can, but this one actually looks a little bit better. I think maybe W40 does work. So now you can only you can see is the, the little crits area. It looks very unattractive, but it's still better than having that thing exposed. So what we're probably gonna do is probably tie it. Well, yeah, I think one should be plenty. It just needs to cover that surface area. Sorry, just needs to cover that surface there. So we'll put one right here where the bar is. We'll shove these wires up a little bit more higher too while we're at it. I did spray some WD-40 right here as well. 